you welcome once again, my children. There came a time when the much heighted comics code finally began to collapse. It was 1971 when writers could once more use the word vampire in their books, and Marvel took full advantage in 1972, bringing on a 70-issue Dracula series, The Tomb of Dracula. I have read that the early issues lacked direction, and the first issue felt more like it was based on universal horror movies, but to be frank, I feel this more reflects the Hammer Dracula films, my children, with the exception of a lack of gore. But the gothic environment on the characterizations feel all too much like the Christopher Lee Dracula films. But enough about movies, we are here about comics, and in Tomb of Dracula number one, we meet Frank Drake, a descendant of Dracula who has fallen on hard times. He had inherited much wealth and squandered it foolishly. Most of his friends had turned their backs on him, leaving him with nothing but an old family castle in Transylvania. Traveling there with his girlfriend Jeannie and her ex-boyfriend Clifton, they hoped to transform the castle into a tourist attraction. Clifton, however, has designs of his own, hoping to win back his lady's love after he has murdered Drake. The townspeople, still fearful of Dracula and his castle, naturally are afraid to bring the travelers there, much as they would also like to see some revenue from the tourism business. That night, while inspecting the castle, Clifton falls down a rotted floor and enters into the titular tomb of Dracula. Discovering Dracula's corpse and the wooden stake contained within, he mocks the entire idea of Dracula's vampirism and pulls the stake from his body. Bones. And of course, my children, that only results in Dracula's awakening. He kills Clifton and goes after Drake and Genie. Drake only manages to hold off Dracula with a silver compact and by informing Dracula of his heritage to the King of Vampires. However, he is too late to save Genie, who is bitten by the Dark Lord and transformed into a vampire herself. She escapes into the night, leaving poor Clifton with the ruins of the castle. Ah, yes, see, the townspeople, upon discovering a dead body with bite marks on her neck, decided to not waste any time, formed a mob, and set the castle ablaze. I admit, my children, you have to admire their efficiency in such things. Though frankly, that does make me wonder why the hell they didn't just do that to begin with. Frank Drake would find more allies over the course of the series run. Hell, it's even considered in canon with the Marvel Universe. Dracula himself encountered Spider-Man! Now there's a thought, my children. Dracula versus Spider-Man! Ah! <laughs> uh...